Muslims, but the Muslim Khan has launched the first of its kind in 10 months, a full time Arabic studies program, combining classical and modern standard Arabic program in the US. But the Muslim Khan is also engaged in a seven year project to produce an audio library of the literary appreciation and linguistic analysis of the Quran. And he's doing that in Irving, Texas. And I am the lucky one that have this honor of going every Tuesday and listening to him, mashallah, over there. It's a very good program. And it's available. And you can find all the information at bayana.com. It's B A Y Y I N A S dot com. And inshallah, Brother Dhaman will speak to us about time, love, praise. And encouragement in relationships. Just to let you know, he's my neighbor also. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya wa al mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ma istana bi sunnatihi ila yawm al deen. اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا الحق وتواصوا الصبر آمين يا رب العالمين ثم أما بعد Pretty much everything I wanted to say has already been said so this is going to be awkward but inshallah ta'ala what I'm going to be sharing with you are some very basic things about relationships within the family and one of the things that you might find peculiar in these 20 or so minutes that we're spending together is that I'm not going to be speaking about very high ideals. I'm going to be talking about some very basic things that I personally feel actually I'm fairly convinced are plaguing all families, Muslim or not, and the Muslims, by the way, are no exception to the problems of family in modern times. So the problems that non-Muslims are facing in their family we're not too far behind. And to assume that we are somehow immune from the problems of the modern world is a deception. Anyhow, one of the first things I want to talk to you folks about is education. What nowadays we consider a good education and why do people get an education to begin with? People get an education nowadays to get a good career. That's probably the number one reason you're going to school or you're sending your children to school or plan to send your children to school that eventually they will have a good way of making money for themselves, a career, a meaningful career. The second reason why people pursue an education is to get credentials. It's kind of a show of respect that I went to college, I graduated, I have a degree. It's kind of a show of a respectable member of society. When you're not able to finish your high school diploma or go to college or whatever else, it's almost a disgrace in most societies. Especially in societies where the parents didn't have such an opportunity, like they were farmers or taxi drivers or whatever else, they dream that their child, when he grows up or she grows up, they will definitely get an education. So the two fundamental reasons for which people pursue an education nowadays is either to get a career or to gain some respect in society. These are the two reasons that are shared by all people. This is not even a Muslim thing. This is across the world. Go and ask somebody why they're pursuing an education in Australia or in China or in Pakistan. They'll tell you the same thing. But what I want to add to this discussion and what this has to do with family and relationships is that we're living in strange times where you can have a PhD in biochemistry and you can have a doctorate in nuclear physics or history or political science and the guy does not know how to be a husband. The guy has no clue how to be a neighbor. He has no idea how to be a good son or a good father for that matter. He has no clue. I would consider that a basic education to be a decent son, a decent father, a decent neighbor, basically a decent human being, a decent husband. These are basic things. But people have pursued, and we've defined for ourselves an education and other things. And when it comes to the very basics of being a decent member of society and a decent member of your family, we are almost completely ignorant. 
the religions that came to make you a respectable human being, that give you your dignity back, people have knowledge of this religion. They're attending courses, seminars, seeing the speeches, memorizing surahs, studying the tafsir, and yet they don't have the wherewithal of how to talk to their wife or talk to their mother. They don't know how to carry a conversation on the phone. They lose their temper all too easily. SubhanAllah, it's incredible. It's really ironic. So what I want to focus on are some very basic things. I've traveled to Sahaba as a gift of Allah to me. I am grateful, eternally grateful, that I have had the opportunity to see over 150 Muslim communities all over the U.S. Masjid to masjid to masjid, community to community to community. And you know what I see? I see the same thing. I see the same exact mistakes being repeated by us over and over and over and over again. And you know who comes to me all the time and says, can you talk to my children? Parents of teenagers. Parents of teenagers come to me all you know I have my, my son? He just doesn't listen to me anymore. Can you talk to him? Like I have some prescription drug that I carry with me that uh, you know. Oh you know what it is? I'm gonna the son comes over, I'm gonna be like <laughs> and all of a sudden he'll be this amazing kid. <laughs> you know, but if you just talk to him, no 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 no. What if you talk to him? And where were you when there was time to talk to him? Let me tell you something about, I'm going to talk about parents first a little bit, then I'll talk about couples, and that's the only time we have two things. Two kinds of fundamental relationships, your relationship with your children, and your relationship with your spouse. So we'll talk about some very basic things in regards to both. When your children are little, when they're little, when they're five, six, seven, two, three, four, you know what the most important thing to them is? I have five of those, I can tell you. I can tell you. The most important thing to them is your approval. They want to make you proud, man. They want to show you what they did. I'll be on an important work phone call. Important work phone call. And my son will come over, my two-year-old will come over. Abba, 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 Abba. Like, okay, hold on. What is it? I'll go back on the phone and he'll start calling me again. Okay, okay, okay. What is it? I want to show you something. What do you want to show me? That is it. <laughs> but you know what I'm supposed to do? Oh my God, that's awesome! Do it again! I'll call you back. <laughs> You're supposed to appreciate what your children do. They live for that. They desire that more than anything else. I have three girls. And you know the difference between girls and boys. Boys can't sit still and girls can't stop this. Right? So I pick my girls up from school, one's in first grade, the other's in third grade. I pick them up from school, it's a 25 minute ride back home, and what are they doing the whole way? You know what happened today in class? We colored the dinosaur, we did this and that, and I was coloring the purple that I decided to put in some green, and they're going on and on and on and on and on. And they cannot help themselves, and they cannot stop, and I have to pay attention and listen. I have to listen and say, oh, what about blue? No, I did only a little bit blue. <laughs> right? I have to pay attention. And you know why I'm saying all of this? Just one more story on the side, just to wake you up a little. I, t I share the story all the time. My, my, my oldest daughter, my eldest, what's that? She's, uh, when she was younger, she was really into finger painting. So she did her hands in paint and just making a big old mess, right? And she brings this big cardboard to me. And it's a big blob of blue. I don't see anything, right? And she says, oh, look what I made. And I'm sitting there going, that's awesome, a mountain. And she says, no, it's Mama. And I was like, oh, <laughs> don't tell Mama. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is they live for your approval. They live for it. But those of you that have children that are teenagers, do they get in the car when you pick them up from school and they can't stop telling you about what happened? Does that happen? Like, you know what happened in school today? My teacher said this and that and the other and I got an A on my paper. No, nope. they're quiet. And you're trying to, how was your day? It was okay. So what'd you do? Something. Where are you going today? Somewhere. They don't talk. Getting them to talk is like an interrogation at a police station. And they're not saying anything to you. And while you're trying to ask them questions, they're texting their friend, my dad is asking too many questions today. <laughs> I don't know what's up. Did you tell them something? <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is very simple. At a younger age, your children crave your attention. And when they get older, you will crave their attention. 
But if you don't give them attention when they're tiny, when they come to you with their toys and you say, go in your room, I'm watching the news. The game is on. Could you take it, please? Come on. I had a long day at work. I don't want to deal with this right now. We have some, we have, I have friends over. It's embarrassing. Go to sleep. Go get out of here. When you have this attitude towards your children, like they're an obstacle in your path, your job was at work. When you come home, you're on vacation. No, buddy, your job began when you came home. That's your job. What you did over there is just to fulfill your real job at home. Be a father. I'm talking to the men here. Be a father. Spend time with your children. They're not just there. So if you put them in school and you come home from work, you just want to go to sleep. You don't want to bother with anybody. You don't want to talk to them. And actually the easiest way to not talk to them is get them an iPod Touch and an iPhone and get them a computer and a laptop in their own room with high speed internet. So you don't even have to look at their face. They can just be in their room all day Facebooking. Finding themselves a new set of parents online. <laughs> Seriously. Be, be a father. Be a mother. Don't replace your motherhood and your fatherhood with these things. Because if you do, when they become independent, you know what happens to most parents? To most of you, your children, they only see you as a bunch of dollar signs walking around. And the only time they come and talk to you, Dad, can I have five bucks? Actually, nobody asks for five bucks anymore, right? It's twenties nowadays. And I know, I know you. They haven't seen money that small. They don't know fives. Can I have twenty dollars? Can I go to the mall? Can you drop me off? Can I go over to my friend's house? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do the other? When they want something, they come to you. Otherwise, you don't see them. And when they get to a certain age where they are old enough to make their own little bit of money, guess what? You're not going to see them at all because your cash register is no longer relevant. That's no longer relevant. If this is the relationship you are setting yourself up for, you're headed for destruction. We gotta change this now. And the way to change it, and it's gonna be hard for a lot of you to implement this, but we have to be friends with our children. We have to be their best friends. They should enjoy hanging out with us the most, the parents. The parents should not be a nuisance. The parents should be a joy to children. They should be a joy to them. And in being good parents doesn't mean you get them toys and you get them nice things and you get them nice clothes. That's all there and that's fine and dandy. But the most important thing you give them right now is your time. Especially in this society where so many things are pulling away at their time. And the thing you are not able to give them. You can give them their own room. You can give them money. You can give them allowance. You can give them clothes. But you don't give them time. And when you don't give them time, they separate themselves mentally from you. They cut themselves off. They learn to become independent at an early age. And independent in this society really means alienated. It doesn't just mean independent. This is a serious matter in how to raise our children. We have to openly communicate with them. And that's the other thing. And part of this communication, only one more thing about parenting before I go to marriage. Just one more basic thing about parenting in this society. You know, there are certain things in Islam that are absolutely unacceptable. They're taboo, they're forbidden, they're haram, they're, they're evil. But our children see them every day. They see this stuff every day. You can't even avoid it. <coughs> they're looking out their window and they see a billboard. You know? They're just watching cartoons and an ad comes on. They see this stuff. And you put them in, most of you put them in school. And I don't even say Islamic schools are safe. Because most kids in Islamic school are watching the same shows that the kids in public school are watching. And they're talking about it at the school too. Let's face reality for a moment. They are exposed to a lot of stuff. They really are. So the first time your daughter comes home and starts talking about some, you know, some Disney boy that they're, you know, that, that they're pushing on in the media, or some girl that sings a lot of songs, and these are filthy robots, filthy. They're worse than animals. I'd rather my, my, my children watch like puppet animals than watch these people, because they behave worse than animals. Well, like these, the Hannah Montanas of the world are the filth of the planet. They really are. And to have, and I've seen this, little Muslim girls with hijab on going to Islamic school with a Hannah Montana book bag. What is wrong with you parents? What happened to you? This is unacceptable. But when your children bring something like that up, they say something like that. They say something that is completely unacceptable to you. What happens to most parents? This is wrong. We don't talk about these things. Stuff for Allah. Say stuff for Allah. Fine, I guess you don't want to talk about it. I'll just talk to my friends about it then. And you know what you just did? You basically told them, if you have something that is of this nature, of a controversial nature, don't talk to me about it. But does that mean they'll not talk about it at all? They will talk to someone. Who's it going to be? 
They're friends. Most of the time they're non-Muslim friends, from whom they will get non-Muslim kinds of advice. You close the doors to communication. And me being from the background I am, my ancestry is Afghan. So I have a hot temper. So uh, my daughter came home one day, preschool. My daughter was in preschool. But we have this, we're very possessive of our daughters, you know. So she comes up and she says, you know, Ahmed was so funny in class today. I was like, who's Ahmed? <laughs> And my wife says to me, calm down, let me talk to you. You go away, you can't handle this. <laughs> and she talks to me, it was nothing, he just fell off the chair, she was saying it was funny, it's very innocent. But if she hears, my dad get, really gets upset when he hears the name Ahmed or, you know, Sharif or whatever, you know, so I better not bring it up. I better not tell my parents what happened at school, then I've shut the doors of communication. I've made that mistake. And a lot of parents made that mistake and they're paying the price now. And they're listening to this and they're shedding tears because they're remembering the mistakes they made. They really are. But let's switch gears quickly, inshallah, and talk a little bit about marriage. The other fundamental, the core component of a healthy society. We cannot talk about da'wah. We cannot talk about establishing a harmonious Islamic society until we have a har harmony inside the household. But our households are the places of chaos. How are we talking about higher ideals in Dharma when our homes are broken? Husband and wife are arguing every day. Sarcasm inside the house. Nasty commentary towards each other. You know you're really not that pretty. Oh, you're no Yusuf Ali Salam yourself. You don't see me cutting my hands. <laughs> Unnecessary sarcasm. Unnecessary co hurtful commentary towards each other. Hurtful words to it. And you know, a lot of times you know exactly what's going to annoy your wife, and you do it anyway. And a lot of times the women, they know exactly what's going to get under his skin. And they'll say it anyway, just to see what happens. Right? And who's watching all of this, while you're doing this to each other? These word games you're playing with each other, and this battle inside the house. Who's watching? Who's the real victim? The children. The children are learning this behavior. What kind of parents are they going to be when they grow up? There's no sense of forgiveness inside the marriage. You know, the, the Muslim man, a lot of you who work in, you know, in the public sphere and corporate or whatever else, you'll go to work, your secretary, highly inappropriately dressed, is smiling at you. How's it going, Mohammed? How's your day? And I guess pretty good, yeah, you know. I don't have like five minute conversation with the secretary. You come home, the wife says, how's your day? I don't want to talk about it, I have a long day at work. This is what we're doing inside our homes. Ruining our own relationships with our spouses. When was the last time, let me tell, ask the brothers, I'm not in a position to speak on behalf of the sisters because I'm not one. They should be getting advice from sisters. But let me tell you, get on your case for a minute. On my own. When was the last time you got her a gift, man? When was the last time you took her out to the, to the bazaar over there and she picked something like, no, 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 put that back, put that back. When was the last time you got her something? Spot without her asking. When was the last time you hung out with her? Just took her out for some ice cream for no reason. They don't ask for much. They also just ask for your time. They only ask for your time. Wallahi, there are sisters who complain to me, and I couldn't believe my ears. They complain to me that they haven't seen their husbands forever, because when they come home, they sit on the computer and just YouTube away the whole night. And they haven't seen, they're crying. It's like we're not even married anymore. Get off the computer, man. You have a wife, you have children to deal with. That's your priority. What are you sitting there listening to Islam? What Islam is that? You know, I was late to this lecture. I was 20, I was supposed to be here at 10 o'clock, I got here at 10.25, you know why? I was stuck at the, you know how crazy the elevator is in Marriott? I was even at to deliver burgers to my kids. How am I gonna come here and give a relation, a lecture about relations with family if my kids are hungry? <laughs> it's okay, I'll be late. Like, I'll deliver the burgers first. We have to be courteous to our family. We have to extend 